Hey y'all, it's Amanda here at Recipes Worth Repeating, and today I am featuring a really special product here on my YouTube channel called Earth Echo Cacao Bliss. And I'm gonna show you how to make these amazing chocolate amaretto truffles using the cacao powder. I had a client contact me a couple of months ago. She's getting ready to get married, and she asked me if I would come up with a couple of recipes that are both gluten-free and vegan. Well, I've got the gluten-free recipes down pat. The majority of the recipes on my website, they're gluten-free. And while I do have a lot of vegan recipes on my website, making a vegan candy is actually pretty difficult because it's dairy-based. Most chocolates and candies that you make, you need the dairy in order for those to turn out properly. So with the help of the cacao powder, I was able to come up with the most amazing vegan amaretto truffles that you ever tasted. As a matter of fact, they taste better than regular amaretto truffles. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the ingredients that I use in these amaretto balls before I take you into the kitchen and walk you step by step on how to make these. First, the star of the show is the cacao powder. And everybody knows that when you're baking or you're making candies, especially with chocolates, and you're using cocoa powder, it really needs to be a high quality cocoa powder. Well, cocoa powder and cacao powder, they're similar, but they're different. So the cacao powder is actually a little bit more bitter in taste, which helps with this recipe because it's gonna really pull out that chocolatey flavor and it has way more nutrition in it than cocoa powder. Cocoa powder is typically cut with a lot of preservatives, a lot of sugar, and they strip out those nutrients and those minerals, not the cacao powder. So when I'm eating chocolate made with cacao powder, I actually don't feel as guilty because I'm getting some nutrition. So I use the cacao powder in this recipe. I also use vegan chocolate chips. I use semi-sweet chocolate chips. And you can find these at your local grocery store. You can find them at Sprouts, Trader Joe's, or even on Amazon. I use vegan butter for this recipe, which actually is a game changer than using regular butter. Vegan butter is full of a lot of fat, and it really helps with the truffle and establishing that, that truffle velvety smooth center. So the vegan butter is an absolute must in this recipe. And then we're gonna use a little bit of almond extract. And of course, amaretto. The amaretto gives it that spike, that little zest that you need. And it actually pairs amazingly well when you eat these truffles and have a glass of red wine. It's fantastic. So let's stop here and let's walk into the kitchen let me show you step by step on how to make these amaretto truffles using the cacao bliss. Start by taking a 16 ounce bag of semi-sweet chocolate and cutting it and adding the morsels to either a food processor or a blender. Today I'm using a blender, it's what I have handy. And so I'm dumping the bag into the blender Place the top back onto the blender and turn the setting to low so that you can start chopping the chocolate. This is important because when we start melting the chocolate, it's not gonna melt correctly if it's the thick morsels. So when we chop them into slivers, it helps melt better. Halfway through the process, you're gonna need to take a spoon and move the chocolate around. It tends to stick to the sides of the blender and food processor. So put the lid back on, turn the mixer on to low and finish chopping the chocolate. Once the chocolate has been chopped, remove the blender and empty the chopped chocolate into a measuring cup. You need two and two thirds cups of chopped chocolate. Empty the two and two thirds semi-sweet chocolate that's been chopped into a large bowl. Now it's time to add the cacao bliss. Add two tablespoons of level cacao bliss to the chocolate. It's really important that you don't use heaping tablespoons when you're adding it to the chocolate. You 
Using a spatula, go ahead and combine the cacao powder and the chocolate until it's well combined. Set the bowl aside. From there, get a cutting board and add six tablespoons of butter. Using a knife, slice the butter and then start cutting those slices into smaller pieces about the size of a pea. This is important because we're gonna be adding this butter to the hot chocolate to melt and it needs to be in small pieces so that it melts evenly. Place a saucepan on the stove over medium high heat and add in one cup of coconut whipping cream. We need to bring the whipping cream to a low boil. And it's really important during this process that you stir the whipping cream so that it does not burn. This is gonna take about three to four minutes to heat up to the temperature that it needs to be before we add it back to the chocolates. So during this time, during the heating process, again, use your spatula and move the liquid around. You can see here that it's starting to bubble on the sides and that's a good sign. From there, continue to stir until the coconut whipping cream is boiling even more, ensuring that it's not a heavy boil. Again, you want a low, steady boil. Remove the saucepan from the heat and pour the coconut whipping cream into the bowl with the cacao bliss and the chocolate. Now you can see that this coconut whipping cream is super, super hot. And what that's doing is it's about to melt the cacao bliss in with the chocolate. Use a whisk and slowly start whisking the coconut whipping cream together with the chocolate. Speed it up a little bit because we've got to start combining all those ingredients so that you get a very velvety texture. Next, take the almond extract and add one teaspoon to the melted chocolate mixture. Grab the amaretto and add three tablespoons of amaretto to the bowl of the chocolate mixture. Next, take the chopped butter and add it to the bowl of chocolate. This is what makes the truffle mixture super velvety. Pick up your whisk and start to whisk the butter in with the chocolate until all of the butter has melted. This will take a few minutes, but you can see here that this texture is velvety, creamy, super smooth, and it's gonna make the most amazing truffles. Remove the whisk from the bowl, grab plastic wrap, and cover the bowl of chocolate completely. We need to place the truffle mixture into the refrigerator so that it can cool. It's really important in order to form those truffle balls that the mixture is cooled. It's been about 24 hours that my cacao truffle chocolate has been in the refrigerator. So it's nice and firm and it's nice and chocolatey and it's ready to be rolled into our truffle balls. So what you're gonna need to do is get a cookie sheet and cover it with parchment paper. You could use aluminum foil, but parchment paper works so much better when we're baking or we're making candies. Go ahead and remove the saran wrap from the bowl of chocolate truffle mix. I've got two spoons here for a reason. One, I'm gonna show you guys the consistency of this truffle mix. Now, think about this, this is candy. So this is not a hard chocolate, this is a very soft chocolate. So we're talking truffle. Think about when you bite into a chocolate truffle. The outside shell of the candy is hard and crunchy, but the inside is velvety and smooth. And that's exactly what you're gonna get with these truffle balls. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take a bite of this just to make sure that I'm loving the taste. It's, it should be velvety, it should be buttery, it should be melting in your mouth with a hint of amaretto. And because we use the cacao cocoa powder, it's full of rich chocolatey flavor. And just like I said, 
velvety melts in your mouth. It's absolutely phenomenal. So now we're ready to go ahead and make our balls. I take a spoon, just a regular size spoon, and I dip it into the bowl. It's a little hard, which is normal. You want it to be hard because when we dip these in the melted chocolate after they've been rolled and they set for a couple more hours, you want them to be cold and hard. And so we're going to use about a half of a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon of the chocolate and you are gonna roll it with your hands, okay? We're gonna get dirty in this, in this video because our hands get very chocolatey, but you've got these beautiful little truffles and these are rich and they are full of flavor. So you don't want them to be too big. You want them to be, again, that's about a half of a tablespoon. And if you want, you can go a little bit bigger and do more of a tablespoon size. You're going to use up all of the chocolate in your bowl and you are going to roll every single one of these until all of your chocolate has been used. You can see here that these perfect size little balls, you're going to get about 45 to 50 of these guys. But if you use a bigger ball, maybe like two tablespoons of the chocolate truffle, you'll get about 25 to 30. And don't worry about making the balls look like a perfect circle. You can see this one's pretty perfect. Like it's a beautiful round little truffle ball. And think about it, when you dip it in the hot melted chocolate, it's really going to help form that circle. So don't worry about the ones that aren't so perfect. Like this one, it's a little oblong, but again, there's an art to making these balls. And to make them more of that perfect circle shape, what you're gonna need to do is when you're rolling them in your hands, you just apply a little bit more pressure and you go faster, right? And that really helps make them um, more perfect circles. But again, you can kind of shape and set that final shape of those circle truffles when we're doing the chocolates. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do now. We are going to take saran wrap. We are gonna cover these and we're gonna place this back in the refrigerator for about two to three hours so that these can get really cold, they can set, and then we'll be ready to melt the chocolates and get those dipped. We've gone ahead and we've removed our truffle balls from the refrigerator. They've been chilling for about two to three hours, so they are nice and cold. So what we're doing now is we have a double broiler on the stovetop. If you don't have a double broiler, like I didn't pull mine out because I wanted to show you that you can use an aluminum pan and then you can put a pot on top of it to kind of make your own homemade double broiler if you don't have one. I've opted to use my cast iron coated pot because it regulates heat really, really well. So I've got about three cups of water in my aluminum pot and I brought it to a boil, a very low boil. So we're talking like medium to medium high heat and you can see the steam coming out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take more of our vegan chocolate and I've gone ahead and I have chopped it like I did before in the blender, or you could always use a food processor. It melts a little bit better and it helps hold the consistency and not um, getting too thick. So I've got about two cups right here that I'm gonna start with. And I'm pouring about half of it into my pot. Now since the pot is already heated, it's gonna start melting. And I am using a whisk to just kind of get that chocolate going. I don't want it to burn. So you can see that it's starting to melt. I want some of those clumps start to dissolve and really melt is when you are gonna be ready to start dipping those amaretto balls in the chocolate. Now melting chocolate and making candies is incredibly finicky. So your temperature control is crucial at this point. 
And I'll talk a little bit about temperatures for maintaining the water temperature and my expert tips. But right now we're gonna strictly go off of visual, okay? So you can see here that my chocolate, it is melted. So what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm gonna grab an amaretto ball from my tray, nice and cold. You can use your fingers, you can use a fork, you can use a candy dipper, kind of like I'm using right here. And you are just going to dip it and put it back on your tray. Again, we're being very sensitive here to the temperature of the chocolate. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit, more toward like a low, just so it kind of stays hot. And then after I've done the dip, again, I'm gonna continue to roll the balls. Now, when you put the balls back on the sheet, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I have crumbled up some almonds, because I really like to sprinkle on a little bit of almond dust, as I like to call it, because when we start to let these cool in the refrigerator again after these have been dipped, it just help make these even more pretty. One expert tip that I'll talk about now, but we'll touch on it a little bit later, is if your chocolate gets a little too thick, a little too fast, then you can add what's called Paramount Crystals. Paramount Crystals, let me show you what they are. They're these white little flakes that if you add it to chocolate, it helps to liquefy the chocolate. So it kind of makes sure that it's not getting too thick so that you can continue the process of mixing and melting the balls and it helps keep that chocolate at a nice consistency. Okay, so now that we've dipped all of the amaretto balls in the chocolate, they are almost ready to go back into the refrigerator to chill for about another hour. But before we do that, I am going to kind of splash on those really pretty white lines that you see on candy. And I know that sounds kind of difficult to do, but it's really, really easy to do. So what we're gonna do here, I've already melted some, but you need these white chocolate baking chips. You can get these at Walmart, you can get these at Michael's online, any candy store where you find like baked goods for making candy and things like that. Um, all you need to do is take about a fourth of a cup of those and melt them in the microwave, probably about a minute and a minute and a half, stirring about halfway through. And you're gonna get this paste in our glass bowl here, okay? It's kind of thick. So I can't exactly like spray that on. So what we need to do is add a little bit of the melted whipped coconut cream to the white melted candy. Probably gonna start off with about a tablespoon. We're gonna get that stirred so it's more liquefied. You don't wanna use water. Water does not sprinkle well onto these candies. I'm adding about another tablespoon just to get it to the consistency that I need it in order to get it to go properly. Okay, so what you do next is you take a whisk I really like taking a whisk that has the plastic or the silicone at the end, and I dip it in here. This gets a little messy, so make sure you're wearing an apron or not a nice shirt. I really hope I don't get my shirt messed up in this process. And what you do is you are literally going to get your fingers around the whisks, and you are just literally gonna spray it on. Uh, I don't know what you call that. Drizzle. You're going to drizzle it on. So you can see that I am just drizzling on the white chocolate on top of the chocolate covered truffles with the almonds on top. And that's how you get that gorgeous gourmet candy look for your amaretto. Okay, so these have been chilling in the refrigerator for about 45 minutes. We've got a nice, gorgeous, crunchy shell on top of these amaretto balls, and they are ready to serve. 
But before we do that, let's talk about some expert tips to have you make the most successful amaretto balls you can possibly make. Because I'll tell you, making candy can be very, very difficult. And this is considered a candy, it's a truffle. So let's start off by talking about this being a vegan recipe. Can you make this non-vegan? Absolutely, totally can. But I have perfected this recipe for vegan. I use a vegan butter. I use Earth Balance. It's my absolute favorite vegan butter. It is velvety and I can tell a huge difference when I make regular amaretto balls with normal dairy-based chocolate and butter versus the vegan brands. So definitely use a vegan butter. Because they're vegan, you're also not gonna use any dairy products. You're going to use coconut cream, but not coconut milk. It has to be coconut cream. Coconut cream, the kind that I use, is whipped. So reference back to where I talked about the ingredients and make sure you're using a whipped coconut cream. It makes a huge difference when making these balls. And then last, your chocolate is super, super important. Chocolate is finicky. When you melt chocolate, it is definitely temperamental. So the kind of chocolate that I used again, this is Enjoy Life. These are mini chips. It's semi-sweet. Your chocolate truffle in the middle is more of a dark chocolate flavor because your cacao powder is definitely going to bring out the flavors of the true chocolate. So it's gonna be more of a dark chocolate. So you want a semi-sweet um, vegan mini chip to coat these balls and to also make the truffle. Okay, so now let's talk about melting chocolate because again, melting chocolate is finicky. It will burn really quickly. So remember what I said about having that double broiler and then getting it more to like a medium, medium high temperature and then when that chocolate is starting to melt, you turn it down to medium low watching the consistency of that chocolate and even moving it to low when you're rolling your balls. If you want to get super scientific about this, then pull out your candy thermometer and measure the temperature of the chocolate and it should be around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. You never want to let your chocolate when making these balls get over 120 degrees. That's when it gets super thick and you can't roll them and you'll need to add those Paramount crystals. I have made literally 20 to 30 dozens of these. I make these all the time. So I feel like I'm at a point where I can do these and just look at the chocolate and measure the temperature and get it at the right consistency. So let's talk about the chill time. I wanna talk about the chill time when we've made that chocolate truffle where it goes in the refrigerator. And then I wanna talk about the chill time of after you've actually rolled the balls. So you wanna, you wanna stick to around two to three hours in the refrigerator when the truffle mix is trying to set. But to be honest with you, you can go overnight. You can go 12 to 24 hours. I would not go past 24 hours. Um, between the two and three hour mark is perfect. But there's those days where you just didn't have time to finish out the process because this is a multi-step recipe. So. 12 hours has worked extremely well and so has 24 hours. Then after you've formed your balls and you put them back on the tray and in the refrigerator, you only need to chill these again for another two to three hours. If you run more like 12 hours or overnight, totally fine. Same thing with after you've dipped the balls. You only really need to put them back in the refrigerator for them to form that shell for the candy. But again, you can leave them in there for two, three hours, 12 or 24 hours, totally your call here. You don't wanna freeze these balls. These are definitely made to be in the refrigerator, but they are not frozen, okay? So these have been in the refrigerator. They are crisp and they are ready to, to dive into. So I'm actually gonna grab one right now and take a bite. These are like the most addictive, wonderful recipe for candy that I have ever made in my entire life. They're that good. So, phenomenal, amazing. I can taste just a hint of the amaretto. It's velvety, full of chocolate, super rich. And this will pair with a cup of coffee or a red wine. You could get a good red wine to pair with this. It would be phenomenal. 
So I'll go do some wine tasting actually, and I'll put it in the description on some of my favorite wines to pair with these amaretto balls. Guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this recipe. I hope you have the best success making these. They're a lot of fun. Do me a favor, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you share this recipe with your friends and family. Make sure that you try the cacao powder. It is amazing. It is so much better to bake and make candies with cacao powder than with cocoa powder. There's a huge taste difference. There's also a lot more nutrients and definitely better for you than using cocoa powder. Thanks and we will talk to you guys in the next recipe.